And welcome back to the Constitutionals Podcast. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premiere podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. <laughs> first, first episode of the new year. And uh, finally back, if you're not watching this, if you're not watching this, I urge you, and I urge you to, I urge you to do so. Let me do this thing. Hurry up. Hold on. Let me uh, start the timer. If you're not watching this, what are you doing with your life? You should be watching this show. It's a great show live. <laughs> A great show live. Uh, first show back in the new year, 2019. Here we are. I've been doing this show for nigh on three years now, which is crazy to believe. And I still have yet to <laughs> sit down and put this stuff up right, uh, right when show needs to be started. But here we are, new year, new me. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> 27 seconds in, or 30 some odd seconds in, and the show's already off the rails. Uh, Hey, let's get started. I got a, I got an issue. (laughs) I got a lot of issues. I got I got one particular issue. The trackpad on my laptop has been dead for two weeks now. And so I just been using the mouse on my desk over there. I point to it and no one can see it. And it is, it's, I mean, it's fine. You know, that's doing when, when I do that. But I took this thing out to the field a couple of times by the field. I mean, I took it to my real job <laughs> and I wanted, I wanted to, I wanted to do some work there. Uh, thank God I didn't have time to do that because, you know, I opened it and it just doesn't work. That's crazy. Uh, I'm, it, it may seem like I'm doing something on my phone. I'm not, I'm just forwarding, uh, these, these, uh, stories that I wanted to cover really quick to my Google Chrome. I'm using the app called Push Bullet. It's an Android and Apple app. And what it is, it takes it takes whatever you want to uh, push. I don't know if you can see the camera. I don't know whatever camera's on because I cut this thing blind. But whatever you want to push, you like it'll take the URL or whatever. It's kind of like Chromecast. You take the URL and it'll send it to wherever you want to send it. So if I want to send, uh, you know, the article from my phone to my laptop without having to, uh, you know, Google or save it as a bookmark, then boom, I can do that. Push bullet. Then they went paid and now you have to pay a yearly fee. You can text on it and copy and paste, but you have to pay a yearly fee in order to send over a hundred text messages. So I still use a free one. And now I won't have to be looking at my phone for the rest of the congratulations to Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> I've been getting messages about her all day. <laughs> She's the new speaker of the house. Well, same speaker. She kept her position with the Dems. <laughs> Not a political podcast, even though it's gone political several times. Uh, lighting looks good. It's dark outside. It's raining. I got the uh, regular light, the regular uh, fill, fill light. No, that's the fill light over there. I got the regular light right here. And then I have these daylight bulbs in this lamp that's working as a fill light. And then it's so dark outside. It's raining and all this stuff. Now I get, now it looks good. This camera's about to die, so <laughs> I gotta hurry up and do this. Uh, okay, so welcome back to the Constitutional's Podcast. If you didn't know, this is the uh, original podcast for C Plus Comedy. It, well, actually, no, it's not. No, it's not. There, there have been two other podcasts before this, but this is the longest running one at 90 episodes. I believe that's what we're on right now, so congratulations to me. I did not think I would make it this far. So here we are. We're doing we're doing it. This is this is really great. I love this show. I love doing it. Uh, you'll notice the past couple of weeks, I've been either in my car or, uh, somewhere else, not doing this. Well, not, oh, I've been doing this podcast, but somewhere else. And it sucks that I wasn't able to do this, but, uh, that's what happens when it's the holidays and, uh, I'm insane and people are at home and I hate recording when people are home. Someone's here now, but they're in a far off room way, 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 way down the apartment. So I got to hurry up and do this so I can uh, finish this. You know what? We won't be talking about the thing that I, uh, I had, I can't even copy and copy and move it. We won't be talking about the thing I had originally wanted to talk about. So that's, that's fine. We'll save that for next week. We'll have something to talk about. Paste. Uh, okay. So let's talk about Andrew Tribeca had returned. Uh, it's a wonderful show. If you don't know, it's uh, created by the, uh, Carell family, Nancy and Steve Carell. I put the woman first. It's 2019. <laughs> Nancy and Steve Carell, and uh, it's about Rashida Jones. Uh, imagine the Naked Gun series, uh, but in televised format. It's very comedic, very, very. Co- it's jokey. It is every sentence is a joke. I would no, no the show should ever be taken seriously. But it's uh, about a cop, Andrew Tribeca, who in L.A. and uh, they solve mysteries. She solved mysteries with her uh, with her uh, boyfriend cop partner Giles played by Hayes MacArthur, uh, who's missing from the new season as well as Dion Cole, who's also, who's was only in one episode of this new season. And I fell asleep during it. So I got to rewatch that, but, uh, it sucks that they got rid of those characters, but now they have Bobby Cannavale and, 
Boy, oh boy. I was, I just watched a movie with her yesterday called hearts beat loud. Let's look it up. I feel so bad, but uh, Andrew Vermillion's back. And, uh, <laughs> and now I forget the other guy. Oh, Jerry Burns is back as well. Uh, her name is Kiersey Clemens. God, how do I forget her? I, I, she's on easy. She's on this. She, I called her Tessa Thompson last week. I called it uh, this week. I'm sorry. Cause I recorded another episode of the constitutionals or no, I've released the episode of constitutionals earlier this week. So there you go. News time. I swear to God is out right now. I promise you it is on YouTube by the time this even before this even goes up before this even goes up in video form. It is on YouTube. Uh, watch it, please. I'm so sorry. It's bloopers. Uh, again, I got so busy at work and I just couldn't handle it. Andrew Tribeck is great. Also hearts be loud. Phenomenal movie. Uh, Kirstie Clemens, uh, Tony Collette, Nick Offerman. Great movie. Really good movie. Uh, Nick Offerman is the dad to Kiersey Clemens. Um, and she's about to go to college. He's going to sell his record store. He wants to start a band with her. Uh, the mu- the music they make is good, but she's like, no, I want to go to college. And he's like, no, you got to stay with me. And then there's a whole thing. Uh, it's a really fantastic movie. The music is so good. It's like the movie band aid with, uh, Zoe Lister Jones and Fred Armisen, and I forget who else is in I think I think Adam Pally. That's it. both of those movies are about people, just regular people, just making bands, and the music is just really good. So I urge you to check both of those out. Hearts Be Loud, Andy Tribeca, and now Band Aid. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to the thing. Let's see what we're talking about. Uh, okay, so I, I saw this Twitter rant yesterday. Michael Pactor had a very Michael Pactor is an analyst who really only deals with money stuff, but he has a long history with video game analysis. And I think he might be an investor in some, some stuff, but I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, so Michael Pactor, uh, he was talking about Netflix and, uh, Disney and how Disney can, really uh, take Netflix's place because or how Netflix should be scared of Disney. Uh, you can read his tweet and I think I'll link to it. It was on January 1st. <laughs> this man's been working on January 1st. Uh, he was, so he was talking about selling his cell rating for Netflix. Uh, but what he, ta- what he was generally talking about was how long he, how long he thinks it'll take Disney to reach Netflix levels and uh, with their new Disney plus streaming service, which is going to be, you know, at least five to eight dollars because we're going to have new shows, original shows and original movies, plus the stuff that's in the vault. Plus, I hope Pepper Ann and, and Bonkers and Disney's Doug. <laughs> I want every single one of those. This light makes me look really good. <laughs> I just sit myself on the TV monitor. Uh, and so uh, the crux of it is he says he doubts Disney will steal Netflix subscribers uh, and it's going to happen, but it's, but it, but it will happen slowly. And like they'll gain very, very slowly. There's an article he linked to from by Matthew ball, which definitely talked about, I'm going to read more in depth on this <laughs> for next week <laughs> because I just don't have the time to go over right now, but uh, I urge you to read it. I urge you to read that thread out. And uh, it's a great, it's a great thread. Michael Pactor's talking about how Disney plus can be of uh, uh, the ultimate competitor. The one thing, the one thing that can, that may be able to dig on Netflix. Speaking of Netflix. Uh, no, speaking of Disney, <laughs> let's, uh, let's keep on with that article <clears throat> that I read. Mickey Mouse will be a uh, public domain soon. Here's what that means. And you, you know, I hate those. Here's what that means. I, I hate those types of grabby things. But Ars Technica wrote this. Uh, somebody Ars Technica who wrote this. Timothy B. Lee wrote this. Uh, and apparently, there's going to be a lot of properties heading into copyright, uh, not copyright, heading out of copyright, <laughs> right into the public domain. This is the first time this happened in 21 years. Uh, all copyrighted works. This happened January 1st. All copyrighted works published in 1923 fell into the public domain within, with a few exceptions. Everyone now has the right to republish them or adapt them for their own new works for use in their new works. So here's the crux of this article. I use that word crux a lot. Like horror crux. Is that what that means? (laughs) Horror crux. I've seen Harry Potter once. In 1998, works published in 1922 or earlier were in the public domain, with 1923 works scheduled to expire at the beginning of 1999. But then Congress passed the Sonny Sonny Bono Copyright Term Extension Act. It added 20 years to the terms of older works, keeping 1923 works locked up until 2019. 
many people expected another fight over copyright extension in 2018, but it never happened. Congress left the existing law in place, and so those 1923 copyrights expired on schedule, January 1st. Now, what I took that to mean is that you're able to now, like Alice in Wonderland or The Jungle Book, you're able to take a Mickey Mouse, uh, and I think I think Batman as well. I think in my, uh, yeah, Batman. You're able to take Mickey Mouse and Batman, and you're able to make your own stories from them and just publish them. <laughs> but of course, uh, with this being 2019, People already know who the original Mickey Mouse is, who created them. Uh, in a hundred years, it'll be the same thing. People will know who Batman is. Uh, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's the case. Assuming Congress, here's a, from the article, assuming Congress doesn't interfere, more works will fall into the public domain each January from now on. Next January, George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue will fall into public domain. It'll be followed by The Great Gatsby in January 2021. And Ernest Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises in January 2022. Uh, let's see. The expiration of copyrights for characters like Mickey Mouse and Batman will raise tricky new legal questions. After 2024, Disney won't have any copyright protection for Mickey's original incarnation. So I guess that means people can take like the, uh, the Steamboat Willie, which is going to be out of copyright in January 2024. Uh, Steamboat Willie. And make their own interpretation of it. We'll see an anime, Mickey Mouse. We kind of have that in Kingdom Hearts, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. Kingdom Hearts 3, finally, after years and years and years. That's Vaporware. Vaporware is video games. I think that's been pushed back. I think uh, Crackdown 3, for, you know, for decades, for a long time. Not decades, for a long time. Crackdown 3, maybe. I would count that as Vaporware. Because it's been like, what, three years since that was supposed to come out? Um, Duke Nukem the Forever? I think that's what it was. Yeah. Vaporware. Uh, so go check this out. That's a great article. It's really cool to see how those things uh, work. It, he didn't really, Mr. Lee didn't go too far in depth. Uh, he did cite a few sources about copyright, but it's really great. Good article. Uh, I lied. He did go really far in depth. I'm scrolling through right now. <laughs> uh, again, this is another one I didn't have time to read but I thought it was interesting. I just, you know, I skimmed through it toward the bottom. Trademark laws add an extra wrinkle. So you can make your own interpretations, but I don't think, I don't think that, yeah, it's just a, I don't think it's something, one of the comments at the bottom I just read said it's a contract and not a, and not a, an actual law. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think this is going to be, Oh boy, I almost pulled this down. I don't think this is going to be too such a serious thing. You know, people aren't going to come out the woodwork going, okay, now Mickey Mouse is going to be starring in his own Mission Impossible. Doing backflips, saying the F word, all that stuff. <laughs> doing backflips. <laughs> As if that's the most hardcore thing I can think of. He's doing backflips right now. <laughs> oh, Mickey Mouse. Oh, he's so strong. I keep going to the trackpad and it's not working. All right. Hey, let's do this. Let's do one thing. Let's take a break. Then when we come back, or the second part of this podcast. It's 2019. It's good to be back. It's very slow. Uh, if you're one, if you're wondering, if you watch the video, I wasn't going to talk about this, but if you're wondering why, I, why I'm dressed uh, in gym clothes, it's because I just came from the gym and I burned a thousand calories, which is crazy. But I was there for two for a long time. <laughs> I'm not going to say how long it was because <laughs> it is embarrassing. Once I got to uh, 800, I got to 800 calories and I was like, oh, I, th- I should go all the way to a thousand because I did, I did it two weeks ago. Uh, I think the week before Christmas, I did it. So I was like, oh, I should do it one more time. <laughs> I'm very tired. All right. So we're going to go to the second. We're going to go to break. Come back. Second part. Here we go. We're going to break this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. Just still left from Jimmy Pardo. Never not funny. Uh, again, I'm very happy to be back here recording this podcast and rec- uh, on, on a typical scale because, you know, for these past, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I did the last news time for 2018, if you don't know this, news time is the premiere show for cpluscomedy.com. Uh, that's the website. Go there. <laughs> Love that tagline. It's a website. Go there. Uh, I genuinely hope you can hear this leaf blower outside. Who leaf? It's raining. Who's leaf blowing? 
but uh, I so I so for so news time is the daily show like show I do for Seabill's comedy. The, we take one entertainment news story and we just dissect it and look at it. We I take a look at it. Me and my producer Ron, who's off in the corner right over there. So we take a look at it for a uh, for a long time. Fifty six seconds into this record or into the second part already. Wow, feels like three minutes. The longer this story is, really make a meal out of everything I do. So I record. So I do the show. And, uh, but you know, I usually take three weeks off at the end of the year, one for Christmas, no one before Christmas, one at Christmas and one on new year's. And then I start jumping in. I jump into news time for 49 more weeks, 48 more weeks. Nope. 49, 50, 51. Okay. So for, so 49 more weeks because 50, 51, 52. Yeah. So for, shut up. Yeah. This is why I got a writing degree. Uh, so, so, so I do that. I take off three weeks and usually what has happened for the past, I think three or four years when I've been doing this news time is five, right? So for the past four years, Oh, well actually, cause I only did it regularly. Uh, so the past three years that I've been doing this, uh, three years prior, I would record, uh, I would, I would basically shoot three, like two blooper specials and then one recommendations thing, and then just not do any for three weeks and then just release them the weeks it's supposed to come out. Uh, so I did, but what I did was this week, this year, so busy. I actually just wrote them and then I wrote the, I wrote the cold opens for both the bloopers. And then I wrote the, uh, the recommendations one didn't get a chance to shoot. I only got a chance to shoot, uh, one of those in front. And that was the cold open for, <laughs> for, for the first blooper special. And then ever since then, I've been, I've been uh, way behind schedule. That's why news time is late. That's why this constitutional, the constitution before this came out this week. That's why this constitution was coming out this week. Now, hopefully, you know, uh, but I'm supposed to be in bed by eight for for job for work because I got to be at work by two a.m. and work till ten a.m. That's what I've been doing all week. It's insane. And then you got a couple of people being here, so I just can't I just can't record in front of people. So I just can't record on the <laughs> on the schedule I need to record on, or even write this show. On I mean, I got to figure out when to when to write next week's news time, which I'm sure will happen today after I take it. Well, actually, I don't think I'm going to take a nap. I'm not going to take a nap. I'm not going to be able to take a nap. It's not going to happen. It's too late. <laughs> I go to bed in three hours. <laughs> it's a two thirty. I am going to take a bath though. Hey, three minutes in. <laughs> Look at that. Three minutes into the second part. All right. So let's, uh, let's go on with these, uh, final three stories. The last two are Netflix's. The first one. That I want to talk about is Roku just unveiled. This is from CNBC. Roku just unveiled new streaming TV changes that sound a lot like what Apple is planning. So Roku, they have a if you have a Roku box or stick, they have a free channel, I think, that has free movies and free TV shows with commercials, I believe. Same thing that Vudu does, the same thing that Hulu used to be prior to being a paid service, subscription service. So now the Roku channel is going to be offering premium content premium shows from Showtime, Epics, and Stars. Epics, Epics is everywhere. I think Sling has Epics. Hulu has Epics. Everybody has Epics. Epics is the uh oh boy, I was gonna talk about I was gonna relate to uh the sex worker, but now I don't think that's cool. So I won't do that. HBO, Netflix, and Hulu are noticeably absent, but those apps are on the platform, so it doesn't really matter. They don't really need that. Uh, But Roku might be able to use the content to draw more eyeballs to the Roku channel where it can sell ads. Users will only have a single bill instead of bills for each premium service. So again, that's going to be what Apple's... Well, who knows what Apple's service is like? Well, we'll get to that in a second, but that's going to be just what Netflix is. It's going to be what Hulu is. It's going to be what Amazon. It's going to be what a paid subscription service is, or better yet, it's going to be what Hulu with live TV is, which is you pay forty dollars a month and you get cable channels, but with commercials. So there you go. But Showtime and Epics and Stars they don't show commercials. So this is, this is very curious. I assume it's just going to be like a, a cable thing, a cable-ish thing. I'm still going to refer to it as cable. Cable came first. Like it's like I say, TV, even though uh, I watch Hulu and Netflix and Amazon. You know, it's really strange. If you look up a show from one of those networks on Google, on my phone, 
Like if I look up Red Oaks, it'll say American Web Television Series. It is from the web, and it is a television series. <laughs> there you go. I just gestured for the for the audio listeners. Roku on Wednesday announced new changes that are coming and uh, to how its users watch premium TV shows and movies. Uh, this is from Todd Hazelton. His name is at Robo Todd on Twitter. If you care about that, it may help it boost ad revenue. Hugely important for the company's success. And it's a move Apple is said to be planning too. Customers will be able to see all these shows and movies available on those platforms, Xbox Showtime and Stars, before they subscribe and can access the movies and TV shows from other devices such as phones and tablets. Sounds a lot like what an app does. <laughs> They'll also be able to pay for all the services through one bill paid to Roku instead of separate bill for each service. Uh, I can only imagine that it'll be three dollars cheaper than getting. Well, who knows how much Epics would cost? But uh, Showtime, I believe, is eight dollars right now. Uh, through the app, through its own app. I think it's eight or 11 and let's pretend it's 11. And then I think stars is 10. So, you know, 20, $22 and plus epics, let's say eight. So 30 bucks. I assume this is going to be like a $40 offering because YouTube TV went up to 40, Hulu's 40, PlayStation TV is 40, uh, it's 35, I believe, 35 or 40. I know I think it's 40. I think it's 40 because they would, they raised prices and it was a whole thing and I thought I wanted it, but I don't. Uh, cause who the best and <laughs> sling is, uh, 25 for one 30 for another one or 40. If you get both of those, I don't like sling. I don't like slings. I, I had slings beta when it was on Xbox. I think it was a 360 when it was in beta and I had that when I was in college and it was so buggy and it just, it wasn't working and it was, it was laggy, but you could watch TV over the internet and it was the coolest thing in the world. Cause I was in college and I, and this was, uh, I think then it was like, it was either free or it was $10. So I think it was free for a minute. And it was $10 anyway, but you, but it, the, the beta sucked, but it was so cool because it was a novel concept of why and it was a thing that was widely available on Xboxes. I think it, opt in of course but still uh i think direct tv now as well is 35 no they raised prices to 40 because that was a whole kerfuffle love that word uh he writes todd rod whatever the heck his name is i was gonna say hell i didn't say it <laughs> it's a clean show the move also sounds similar to what Apple is planning. CNBC reported in October that Apple will mix its free original content with subscription channels inside of the TV app, which is available on iPhones and iPads. Apple may, uh, may introduce its service as soon as this year. Uh, Facebook is in talks with HBO, Showtime, and Stars to offer shows and movies for its Facebook Watch users. What? That's insane. Who wants the? But Facebook Watch has a show on there with Elizabeth Olsen that apparently is really, really good. That is on all the 2018 best of lists and I want to check it out, but I don't want to watch Facebook watch. Same thing with, uh, they have a show called red table with Jada Pinkett Smith, uh, and her mother and Willow Smith. I want to watch that. I want to watch these shows, but I don't want, I don't want to watch it on Facebook watch. I don't want to watch any other service. I'm done. All right. Hulu, Amazon prime, Netflix. Those are the only ones I'm paying for from now on. And, you know, the HBOs and the Showtimes and Stars. But but the only streaming networks I will, and YouTube, I guess YouTube counts. Because that comes with you, Google Play Music. Anyway, but those four are the only ones I will ever pay for again. I'm not paying for any more. That's, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Um, so we don't know what Apple's going to do, but this is probably what they're going to do. They're probably going to uh, uh, do what Roku's doing similarly. Well, yeah, do what Roku's doing similarly. You know, you pay $15 a month. You can get the Reese Witherspoon. I think Reese Witherspoon has a couple of shows on there that are, that are coming out. All the movies that they're financing. Again, Apple set aside, I think it was a billion dollars for their TV ambitions. So they're just trying to get into the space, just like Disney. So that's two more. That's two more services that we have to look out for. And again, they I mean, for what their plans are, they have these lofty plans that will probably pay off because these are the two of the highest biggest, most powerful companies in the world. You know, Netflix can, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying this. Netflix can throw pan at the wall and most of it, it's just a little bit of amount can stick, you know, half of it can stick. Uh, but when it comes to Disney 
even Disney's worst films are still better than some of what Netflix is able to do. And that is uh, not a knock against Netflix. Please. Again, I will work. I will make a show. I've got several shows. I got several scripts, please. Netflix, call me up. Ted Zarendos. I know you're watching this. I know you're one of the uh, subscribers. (laughs) I will never release numbers, (laughs) but let's just say we're doing pretty well. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, go read that article. Speaking of Netflix, Netflix pleads with people. This is from TechCrunch. Kristen Korosek. Netflix pleads with pe- pleads with people to stop doing the Bird Box challenge. Now I have yet to see Bird Box, but I uh, I can get I I guessed what this was this morning when I read it when I read this article before I read this article. Uh, people are Bird Box is a movie that's one of the Oscar contenders, one of the award contenders. Excuse me. From Netflix, this is one of the movies that I talked about on News Time, where they were going to release in theaters for a little bit in order to get contention. Uh, anyway, it's uh, Sandra Bullock stars. It's like the Quiet Place, but for sight. So Sandra Bullock stars. She tries to save these two kids, but they have to be blindfolded because if they go on blindfolded, this is I've never seen a trailer, and I've only read the description once, and this is four weeks ago, or whenever I made that News Time episode. Uh, so she, if, so if they uncover their eyes, then they see these, unse- I, don't know, I guess these monsters or something. And then those monsters make them kill themselves. <laughs> uh, it's very triggering. <laughs> I'm disappointed. I got fixed. That's what people on the internet sound to me. <laughs> but what people are doing is they're blindfolding themselves and they're going around <laughs> in their homes and doing regular top like regular day things regular during the day things like this one lady i'm looking at is uh let's see hashtag bird box challenge oh i can't look at twitter on my laptop that's right she's just trying to navigate her home uh i think you can hear this i don't want you to hear this though because it's all laggy twitter is very laggy on chrome and i think it's my laptop but i don't care i don't care for it uh there's also one this one made me laugh so hard last night a man, his and his two daughters. One's a, one is a baby. One is like a two, a one year old baby that that is that is walking, and the other one's like a middle school child. And he they, he covers their eyes, and he goes, "Okay, we gotta go, we gotta go." They're all they're all their eyes are covered, and so he's, they're running around the kitchen, and then he he runs out of the kitchen, and the baby smacks into a wall, and it's the funniest thing. It's from at Flesh Fire on Twitter. Definitely check out his bird box challenge. Hilarious. And then there's a few more, but uh, I, I guess it's, I guess it's a whole thing. People are doing this. I thought it was funny. I wanted to share it because of that video. Uh, last thing before we hang up. Oh, we're doing pretty well on time. Netflix is curbing. This is from Business Insider. Shona Ghosh wrote this. Netflix is curbing a $256 million revenue stream for Apple by circumventing iTunes billing. So what, uh, and again, this is a story I am not familiar with, but I know what it is. Very strange because I spend so much time reading stuff and it's so stupid and knowing business. I'm like Michael Pactor, but it doesn't matter what I say. Uh, so Netflix if you have an iPhone, if you have an Apple product, if, if, if you have, I think if you have a, I think you have an Android or Apple, but for a lot of apps, you can subscribe to them within iTunes or within the Google Pay store, Google Play store. You can pay with the Google Pay and, uh, and you can subscribe to them. You can see your subscriptions right there rather than having to go to the company. Uh, so now what this does is, is it splits the revenue stream between Apple and Netflix. So if Netflix costs you $11, $12, then I think Apple's going to take like one or two dollars, something like that. They're going to take a, uh, an amount, but that builds up over time. Because if if let's say ten thousand people subscribe, let's let's take it to a number I can do math on. If ten people, that is the saddest thing. If ten people subscribe to Netflix via their iTunes, then that's one hundred and twenty dollars total. But Netflix, I mean, Apple has to take its chunks. That's $20 away from Netflix. Multiply that by 10,000. And then that's how that's how the math works. <clears throat> Netflix has stopped allowing users for, of Apple devices to join or rejoin the streaming service via iTunes. Instead, a new or lapsed users, a new or lapsed users will be asked to pay on Netflix's website. This allows Netflix to avoid paying Apple's levies on new in-app subscriptions. Apple reportedly earned as much as 200 
and $56 million in revenue last year from the Netflix ad. This is very important because this is, that's a lot of money, even for Apple. It sounds like pocket change for a company. I think that has, that's worth 14 billion or 8 billion, something like that between eight and 14 billion. Uh, and again, they set aside 1 billion for television. <laughs> Uh, the change allows Netflix to avoid paying the 15% levy that Apple charges on in-app purchases and keep all of subscription revenue for itself. So let's go back to that 120. Now let's multiply that times, oops, 15%. That's 1875. I was, oh, hold on. I, t- I typed in 125. I'm sorry. That makes me look like an idiot. 15%. That's $18. I was still very close. Still very wow, I'm really good at math. I'm not, I'm not. Please don't at me, bro. According to Sensor Tower, Netflix is a top grossing app in the United States for Apple, bringing in $43 million in November alone. And according to new data cited by TechCrunch, the streaming service handed in as much as $256 million in 2018 to Apple. Uh, Netflix isn't the first one to do this for both Apple and Google. Both take a 30% cut of paid apps. Oh my God, really? <laughs> in-app purchases and subscriptions. That drops to 15% in the second year of a subscription. Oh, so the longer you stay subscribed, the more. So maybe I shouldn't. So I've been subscribing to New York Times via New York Times. Maybe I shouldn't subscribe uh, via Google uh, Google's Android. Because that's what I was thinking about doing. Because I like seeing it there. And plus you can cancel it there. Uh, if you don't, if you subscribe to the New York, I'm going to give you a secret. If you subscribe to the New York times regular, like on the website, you have to call to cancel <laughs> or you have to let your card lapse for a month. Yeah. No, I think it's like two months. There's, there's a, there's one point where I didn't pay for like a month and a half. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is a huge this uh, type of store tax. This is why uh, Fortnite released on its own launcher, not own launcher. I think you had to sideload. Yeah, I think you had to sideload the game on Android, uh, and on Apple, I think you just download it straight from from iTunes. But on Android, Fortnite uh, Epic launched it on its website and said, "Hey, Fortnite on Android, you got to download it yourself." Which is, I mean, these are it's a massive way <laughs> to get around. Uh, to get around these these uh, these rules and levies and stuff like that, but I use levies because Pete, you know, have you noticed people do that whenever they have a word that they've never used before or they don't see, you don't see often that they use that word almost immediately <laughs> to describe something that's happening. It happens a lot. I no- I noticed it a couple years ago. But it's a word. It can happen with any word. It can be a big word, small word, doesn't matter. You, you hear a word you don't use, and you go, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in my head." Then, <laughs> second later, you use it. It's crazy. Anyway, but this is a that's a that is a point of contingency for uh, why Netflix is. You know, it's it's crazy. The uh, past couple of weeks have been very different for Netflix, and this is a, this is a company that is in the negative when it comes to money. They have a lot of, I think, liquid cash. And I, I think I talked about this two weeks ago. They have a lot of liquid cash, but they are credit poor, piss poor, like MoviePass. Oh, I think Helios Matheson has been delisted. That was supposed to be December 18th or 28th. Regardless, they're off. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, go listen to two, two weeks ago, two episodes ago at this point, I guess <laughs> of uh, the constitutionals. And you'll understand that reference. It's all business here, baby, baby. You say baby too. <laughs> it's a reference to comedy. Bang, bang. Why am I still talking? Listen, it's been 20 minutes in the second part. Hey, this has been a great, great show. This has been a great episode. There's some children outside I can hear. It's been a great episode of this show. I'm so glad, again, mention it one more time. So glad to be back on this couch talking to you, lovely people. To all of my subscribers out there, to all the boys I loved. I have not seen that movie. I I suggested it to somebody this past weekend, and and then now I feel bad I haven't seen it. 
I built a bookshelf. Let me tell you what you missed in the past uh, two weeks that I was gone, that I, that I was uh, working and unable to do stuff. I bought uh, a bunch of video games, <laughs> which I probably should not have. <laughs> but you get a little money in your pocket. You're like, I got to buy some video games. I bought a bookshelf. I built a bookshelf, too. Uh, I traded in some books that would either have gotten me three dollars or just that camera just shut off. That would have either got me three dollars in uh cash, three dollars and fifty cents, something like that, or forty one dollars in store credit. But I can only spend that uh, half of that forty one dollars at a time. That's what she told me. That's what the lady told me. I, mean, I was very mad, but it's a nice, it's a nice store. Uh well, it's a cute store. It's not nice. It's a little cluttered. It's called Book Nook in Decatur, Georgia. Check it out. It's a great place, though. I really like it. Comics, uh, Blu-rays. I don't know if they have video games. Who cares? I'm there for the comics. <laughs> and a $150 uh, Homer plushie. I think I have a picture of it. <laughs> I will show you. I, I know I have a picture of it. I'm not going to lie. They also have a... Uh, they have uh, piano books. And I found Best of Taylor Swift. She plays... You can play Back to December, The Best Day, 15, I Knew You Were Trouble, Mean, Starlight, Stay, 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 and Today Was a Fairy Tale. But here's the Homer Simpson. It's a, And it's not even that big. I think if you stand it up, it'll probably be about two feet tall. $150. Crazy. <laughs> I love the Simpsons. I will not be purchasing that. <laughs> All right. Uh, how do we end this show? If you like what you're here, why don't you head on? I pray you do. Why don't you head on over to cpluscomedy.com where you got the latest uh, interviews. <laughs> I feel so bad because I have three interviews that I have not put up yet. <laughs> They're coming, I promise. I just need to not be working. Tomorrow's my last day doing 2 a.m. to 10 a.m. So hopefully I can take it. Come home, work out, grocery shop come home, take a nap, wake up at like four o'clock <laughs> before I uh, go out and meet my lovely uh, female friend. <laughs> this is on tape forever <laughs> on tape. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, so I'll put those interviews up again. Uh, I'm just going to name the interviews. Jason Salmon. I meant to put this up about five weeks ago at this point. Jason Salmon, swear to God, that'll be up this week. Uh, all I have to do is write the description and Kevin Heffernan and Steve Lemmy from the broken lizard. Uh, those are guys who did a, who did the movies of broken lizards, club dread, super troopers, super troopers Two, uh, Bubba beer fest. What else? Slam and salmon, I believe all good movies, all funny movies. I haven't seen super troopers. I haven't seen super troopers. So I don't know about that. Definitely check out that interview. And then the last one is, uh, oh, shimmy Christmas. I forgot. I mentioned it in the last podcast, but check them out. They're all good. Uh, let's see. Website. Oh, uh, if you want to see a video version of the show, head on over to Seaplus Comedy. Nope. To youtube.com slash Seaplus Comedy. I promise you it's a really good video version. Where you can also watch News Time, show I talked about before. There are 215, 20 some odd episodes up. I urge you just watch the last 100. <laughs> Don't watch any more. The ones before that, the ones for the last two years, the ones for the last, yeah, the last year and a half, good. Other ones, garbage. And that's it. That's all I got for you. Thank you for listening. I very much appreciate it. Uh, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Seaples Comedy. Follow me on Twitter at Chad Black White. Follow us on Instagram at Seaples Comedy. Follow me on Instagram at Chad Black White. Thank you very much. Thank you for much. Thank you for much. Thank you for much. Thank you next. Remember how Ariana Grande, and I'm not going to do this. I will do it. Remember Ari, never mind. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, thank you for much.